G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, in my previous video, you would have seen how I uh, cast this piece of uh, aluminium section, U section, uh, using my just my wood fired backyard uh, furnace. And uh, today I'm going to uh, run the face mill over it and clean it up a lot and just see how it looks underneath. Um, I normally use degassing agent, just a bit of um, baking soda and a flux, which is just table salt. But in this case, I just did it straight out of the mould, straight out of, out of the uh, the furnace w without adding anything to it, uh, just to see how it goes, because I haven't done it that way for a long time. And uh, uh, it was good quality aluminium. And I had some comments a little while back from somebody who, one of the viewers who said he never used a degassing agent either. Uh, or anything. Well, I, I've had mixed results by not doing that. So anyway, I thought just for the hell of it, I'll just do it straight out the furnace, straight out the furnace with nothing, and see how it goes. So, all right. Into in this video, we'll run the face mill over this and uh, and see how we go. Of course, I don't have a mill. All I have is a lathe. Everything gets done on that poor old lathe. So we'll be uh, we'll be milling on the lathe. So that might be a bit interesting to people too who've uh, never considered that. Anyway. We'll move right along. Okay, well, of course, when you mill on the lathe, you've got to be prepared to strip it down and, and uh, set it up to, uh, to do that function. So we've ripped off the, uh, the compound uh, mount and uh, chucks off. So just a matter of put the vertical mill slide on and put the ER32... Uh, collet and drawbar into the headstock and we're cooking okay we'll get on with it right well we've got the uh, 32 uh, collet chuck in the spindle we've got the Chinese vertical mill slide on the on the cross slide so now all we have to do is put on a, uh, a vise to hold the uh, the work Put in a uh, facing mill and we're ready to, to uh, do a bit of milling. For this I just use the, the old uh, toolmaker's vise that I have on my uh, pillar drill. You might be interested to see how I mount this. I've got a proper full sized heavy duty uh, vise. Um, and then I mount the, uh, the toolmaker's vise in it. That way you can move the work side to side. This one's also got a rotating table, which you definitely want to get. If you ever buy a pillar drill, get one with a rotating table. Uh, not only can you move your vice side to side, swing your pillar, your table around, you can then also swing the whole arm around. Uh, pillar drills that have got a fixed table, uh, nah, they're rat shit in my opinion. Um, you don't get anywhere near the positioning possibilities that you've got doing it this way. So, yeah, there's a little tip for you. Um, how people get by with pillar drills with fixed tables is beyond me because you've got to basically keep moving your vice around and clamp it down all the time. With this, you can just swing it through two arcs there, uh, and then you can move your vice as well. So anyway, we'll take that off and we'll whack it on the lathe. So there's the old toolmaker's vice mounted onto the Chinese vertical mill slide. Not the best mill slide in the world, but it's okay. I mean. Not a big range of mill slides around actually for uh, for lathe, you know, for uh, lathe work really. I mean, take what you can get, I suppose. It does the job. Um, here's my homemade uh, face mill. Um, just got some replaceable carbide tips on it. I actually made this on, on the on the lathe, you know, milled it up, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Does the job. So we're ready to go. So the next thing is mount the job and get into it. Uh, yeah, I will point out too that if you do use a lathe for milling, you always want to disconnect the, um, the change gears, uh, drivetrain, when you're doing it. Otherwise, uh, I mean, you get a lot of wear and tear on your change gears, a lot of noise, and you can get quite a bit of backlash through, you know, like there's a lot of, lot of hard work going on there, and the gear train can get a bit of a, a battering, um, rattling around, sort of not driving the carriage as such. So... Yeah, I always disconnect it, make sure it freewheels and uh, or is totally disconnected and uh, 
That way uh, he won't do any damage. Uh, I've set the lay to the highest speed, which is 1900 RPM in this case. Being aluminium, I mean, this should go through it like, <laughs> like it wasn't even there. So, uh, all right, we'll set up the job and get on with it. Okay, well, we're ready to go. So uh, you notice that I've got the job set slightly below the centre line of the lathe. That's the best way to do it, to cut down on any vibration and chat it because the cutter will pull down uh, onto the bed more um, coming in from the, the top side of the job and exiting out the bottom. So it's just a little tip. Don't put it dead centre, put it slightly above centre and you'll get a, a better job done. All right, we'll give it a go. I've got the carriage locked down, ready for the first cut through, and we'll just move it through with the, uh, with the cross slide, and uh, once you've done a pass, bring it back, unlock the carriage, move it up and lock it again, do the next pass. That's how it works. All right, we'll give it a go. Excellent. So I'll do the other end now. So we'll just work our way through it. And I reckon this is going to come up oh, very, very good by the look of it. So uh, yeah, we'll work our way through it and then we'll have a close look at it.
Well, everybody watching this video must be thinking, gee, Rob must be happy with this job. Everything's gone fan going fantastically well. Casting turned out great. Um, machined up magnificently. Look at that. Absolutely no porosity whatsoever. I mean, that is one of the best pieces of aluminium I've ever cast. You wouldn't do better if you bought aluminium. Uh, everything was great, and then it all went pear-shaped. I... Uh, <laughs> I got the worst case of harmonics I've ever had in, <laughs> in any machining I've ever done. Look at that. That is shocking, dreadful. And the reason was because when I clamped it, it was my own fault, I had that side unsupported. It wasn't held in the jaws. I was only gripping it back here. So the, the cutter was going across, and you wouldn't think aluminium would vibrate like freestanding aluminium would vibrate like that, but it has and has absolutely chewed the guts out of it, so the whole thing's a write-off now. But it's taught me a few lessons. Uh, yeah, I'll never do that again. Um, I should have put a clamping plate across the top to, to stop any vibration, but anyway, I screwed up big time. It also taught me that um, if you do this sort of job, you really want to leave yourself more depth to play with. That's really, I mean, that's the sort of amount of metal I want to finish with, and I've still got a machine aside, so... If I do this again, and I will do it again for sure, I will make those those thicknesses twice as thick. If you do that, then you have plenty to play with and you can machine away to your heart's content. Um, I do this with a carbide cutter and it, and it did a good job. Um, high speed steel would probably do a better job because I think it's better on aluminium than carbide. I mean, I'm spinning that at 1900, over 1900 RPM, so a carbide still works. But I think high speed steel is a better bet. Casting, fantastic. I mean, I couldn't be happy with that job. But as I said, look at that. Look at those harmonics. That is, that is unbelievably bad. Anyway, these things happen. So she's back in the melting pot for this bit of aluminium, and I'll I'll have to re um, redo the the uh, the mould. I've got some other old steel channel, old um, steel box section. I'll uh, I'll do a bit of cutting and shutting on, and uh, yeah. So the next mould will be thicker. Be a bit bigger overall, and uh, yeah, I'll make sure that when I machine it, I, I, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I'm not really disappointed in the job; it's only an experiment, but it shows you what can happen. The best play, best laid plans of mice and men, um, things don't always go quite according to plan. But there you go. I hope you got a few tips and ideas out of this video. It's uh, it's all a learning curve. I mean, we're all learning, and. Uh, if you don't fail, well, you've never tried. So see you next time, guys. Cheers.